Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition where we're here to offer you insight and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. And today we're going to be looking at the best digital board games. It seems like board games have come a long way in recent times and it's kind of not surprising that the digital world has kind of enhanced them and taken them on board too. There's a whole host of great reasons why you might want to play your favorite tabletop game digitally so that you can play it with people in other locations so you don't have to set up so that you can simply you know play it while you're out and about on the go. I'm sure there's more that I've forgotten about. So I'd really love to hear um, some of your favorites in the comment box below um, and I'm going to share with you some of mine. As usual, this list isn't actually in any order. This is simply the order in which they came to my mind. So let's start with Star Realms. So Star Realms is a deck building game in which you buy ships to place in your deck um, to basically give you money to buy further ships or give you attack to be able to take down your opponents. Um, in real life you play this with you know a whole row of cards in the center and a deck of cards in your hand um, from which you can buy and engage with and Star Realms is a really fun really quick game but playing it with all those cards in real life can get a little annoying especially if you will have to shuffle your deck frequently um, and I think this is the advantage that the app has over the real game to be fair I'm not sure I would actually play the real game anymore I think the app really just does such a better job of the same game um, so with the app you're actually able to play with other people you can play with your friends you can play against the computer it does all the shuffling and all the editing for you you can also add in any of the expansions you feel like you might want to pick up and um, it's the game that's rather addictive like once you start you want to keep going um, and it's really really fun really really quick um, I think it really does suit the, the mobile world really really well And while we're on the White Wizard Games kick, I also would like to talk about the Epic Card Game. Um, as many of you know, I'm a really big fan of Epic the Card Game. Um, it's a fantastic, basically a little bit like Magic the Gathering if you've played that, where you're playing um, beasts and creatures and trying to take down your opponent and they all have special abilities. But the most important part is that they are all epic they're all amazing all, every card you draw feels brilliant and I think that's what's the amazing draw about epic um the nice thing about being able to play it online is you can play it on your phone or in fact through steam on your pc and I prefer it through steam because it's on a, a bigger screen um it's easy to move your way through the cards um and there's descriptions of what every card does and how it works which I find to be really helpful and I think it's another great way of just you know killing some time playing a game and you can also play with your friends This next game holds the title of most played game on my phone or on a tablet. And this award goes to Ascension. So Ascension is yet another deck building game. Um, they do seem to lend themselves rather well to digital adaptations. Um, but Ascension is, yes, a, a game where you're gathering cards into your hand and you're trying to spend them in such ways to get victory points. Um, of, you know, the usual kind of thing. It's got a lane of cards in the center. You put cards in your hand and, you know, they, they combo off of each other. The special thing I think about Ascension is just, just how cool some of the more expensive cards were and the kind of combos you could pull off. It's the only game I've seen where you could make an infinite loop and one of the many I suppose on this list that is infinitely better when played digitally. Um, the real game had you keep keep track of your scores with like little crystals and there was a lot of upkeep having to change cards, shuffle your deck, realign the rows, that kind of stuff and all of that is taken away and done for you um, in the digital version and it's a very 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 good one. I, when I say I played it to death I'm not even close to joking. 
I've got to the point where I can't look at that game and just go, oh God, because I've played it so, so much. It's, a, it's incredibly fun and incredibly addictive. It's mostly a game you could play on your own. Playing with other players really slows it down quite a lot. It's good versus the AI. Um, and there's definitely plenty of hours of replayability and fun in there. It's totally worth checking out. This probably wouldn't be much of a, a board game list if it didn't have Ticket to Ride in there somewhere. And I think the Ticket to Ride digital version is really, really fantastic. Um, I do like the fact that you can have it all set up and ready to go for you. You don't need to lay out your trains or set up your board. You can play it relatively quickly or you know you can take a break and come back to it later. Um, and it's just something very tidy and neat about the way Ticket to Ride plays digitally. So you can play it on your phone because Ticket to Ride actually doesn't have too much text or anything like that. So it doesn't need to have a big screen. You just need to be able to see the map colliery trains and where you're headed and I do think Days of Wonder um, really reproduced the game very lovingly in their app um, and it's one that is well worth looking at. So this next game is one I played a lot of when I got into board gaming initially and then carried on playing digitally and this is Nurashima Hex. So Nurashima Hex is a fascinating tile placing game where each of your tiles is a different type of warrior with a different ability and everybody plays different factions and they all have their own special things and you play it on a little hex by hex grid, hexagonal grid I suppose um, and you place your people next to each other they can shoot from afar and the aim of the game is to reduce your opponent's um, HQ to zero. It's quite tactical, it's very fun. I really love the fact that all the factions did something different or had a, a different way to win or approach the game. Made it very, very cool. And then being able to play it on the phone um, was kind of amazing, having an AI opponent like that and you could swap out all the different factions, try them all out. It's quick to play as well, it doesn't take too long. Um, and I really enjoyed actually all of the animations in the, the game as well in the digital mode, just because you can see all of your characters do their different things. Um, I really enjoyed Nurashima Hex and I have to say that the app kind of killed it for me because it was just, you don't have to set it up, you don't have to do anything and it's all ready to go at any time. Um, it's an app I really, really enjoyed a lot and it's a really good game too. So now we get to the first of my roll and write games on the list and these are games that I think work exceptionally well in tabletop versions. Um, so these are games where normally you would have a pencil and paper and some dice and you'll roll things and you'll mark things off your board and such and I think doing it on your phone makes it super easy. Um, you can do it anywhere and I think they're the kind of, they're quite puzzly games as well and I think they, they match really well with the digital. So the first game I'm going to call out is Gan Shun Clever. Um, so it's, this is a pretty popular game um, among the Roll and Write community. Um, it had, kind of rose to fame last year. And what's cool about it, I think, on the app is that you can just play it back to back repeatedly. There's no stopping. Um, and it is a game, yes, about rolling dice, marking off particular sections to try and gain a high score. Um, it's a great way to pass some time. I think, that's, I think that's the best thing about it. And if you feel like you're doing terribly, you can just start again. You don't even have to continue your game and try to finish it. Um, and I do feel like it's quite addictive because it is a score based game. So you're like, well, I want to do better than I did last time. Uh, you know, I want, I want to exceed my own expectations. And um, there's something, I think there's something very cool about this implementation of it. I definitely prefer it to the, the pen and paper version. The second of the roll and writes on my list, um, and I'm not actually that big of a fan of roll and writes, but I really like them on my phone, um, is Knock Mal. And I played this um, for reals um, with a friend of mine who's big into roll and writes. And yet again, it's rolling the dice, marking off particular sections and trying to, you know, score as many points as possible. They all sound really boring when explained like that, but I assure you, it doesn't feel like that when you play them. Um, and I, I kind of liked it 
and then I discovered there was an app for it and then I found myself just playing it over and over again. I think it's just the ease of play here where you mark off the things, it rolls the dice for you. Um, so I think it's so, it's so much fun actually. And I like trying to better myself at it. Um, and so if you want something that's quick, that doesn't take a lot of time, that you can get a lot of plays in of, um, I think something like this is a, is a great game. So my next title is a game that I've not seen a lot of people talk about, um, but I do think it has a lot of potential for fun. So you're gonna to have to bear with me on this one. Um, and this is BattleCon. And they have um, a free to play version on Steam. Um, so you use your PC in which you can duel against other players, um, play against different characters, unlock things. You know, it's, it's that kind of, it feels very much like a, a video game. Um, but I think it's a great way to try out BattleCon if you haven't played it already. Um, I do like the online aspect. I think it's the uh, BattleCon is a, a fighting game where essentially it's it's you versus your opponent. Each of your characters is unique and has a cool deck of cards. And on your turn, each of you will place a card down, um, and then you flip it up, and we'll determine then how each of you moves. So a lot of it is about outsmarting your opponent in that sense, less than about you know beating them up or something like that. It's very graceful. Um, and I think it's actually quite fun to play on the computer as a great way of practicing to play against real opponents. Um, I think it's fun to be able to play multiple games kind of quickly and easily without having to have, you know, one other person to play with you. And not only that, but BattleCon is quite, I think, a niche game in the first place. Getting someone to play with you might be difficult, but it is a very, very fun game. And I like how they've implemented it digitally. Um, and I've not heard a lot of people talk about it, but I do think it's a great way to try out the game if you're anyway interested in it in the first place. So do check that one out. And now we get to the game I played most on my PC, and this is Race for the Galaxy. So Race for the Galaxy is a tableau building game about while well, exploring space. Um, you're building planets, you're exploring worlds, you're getting goods, you're winning with victory points. You know, you've kind of heard it all before, and the game has a lot of symbols. Um, but Race for the Galaxy is a phenomenal game, and one I've played a lot of in real life too. Um, the digital version, and this isn't one for Steam, I think it's one you download separately. Um, if people want, um, just ask and I'll put a link to it in the description below. And this is like playing Race for the Galaxy with other people just so much faster. Um, also it provides you with information that you could have got during the game if you bothered, but you know, you kind of didn't. So you can see what everyone, um, exactly how many points everyone else um, has exactly how many points your cards are going to be worth if you played it you know that kind of it gives you a, well, not quite a leg up but it does some of the, the thinking for you um, I love how quick it is to play I love the way it's actually laid out that you can see all of your cards very very well it it does feel like playing the game um, and you and then the AI is actually just really difficult sometimes too I've only think I think I've only ever beaten it once and I played it a lot and I mean a lot. I was studying for my PhD and every time I finished like a paragraph or a sentence, I was like, oh, I deserve a game of, of Race for the Galaxy. So there's been a lot of games. Um, and I, I'm still not bored of it, actually. I would still sit down and play it um, right now um, without doubt. So if you like Race for the Galaxy and you've played it before, I do recommend this version. If you've not played Race for the Galaxy before, this might be a little overwhelming, but you know what? It's free, so why not try it? Um, okay, so the final game on my list isn't actually a board game. Shh, um, don't be hating. But it plays very like a board game and I, th I think it's a really good digital game. Um, and so this is called Armello. So Armello, Armello very much plays like a board game. It's actually played on a hexagonal grid. And in Armello, basically you are trying to have the most prestige or to become the the next ruler of our mellow the, the king is dying he's he's poisoned and it's up to you to try and find ways to become victorious there's loads of ways to do it there's loads of cute um animals and you move around the board like you you might with a board game you'll play cards and spells and things like that and you can play against other opponents um the nice thing about this game is that you can play by yourself 
completely fine. You can play with other people. It's very slow. There's a, there's a speed up mo um, mode for when playing it by yourself, which helps a lot. But if you've got a bit of patience, um, it's good. It's very fun. It's very cute. And there's loads of ways to win. Like loads of ways to win. So you can have a different strategy every time you play and I really like that about it. And if Armello was a board game, I would buy it. <laughs> Although I can't see it really working in the real world, but as far as digital games go, it is very board gamey like. So I'm sneaking it in here at the end of my list. So those are all of my favourite um, digital board games. Um, I'd love to hear what yours are. I'm sure there's loads I've missed out on. So why not share them in the comment box below so everyone else can go and check them out. Um, and thank you for watching. So until next time, I'll be here playing games, asking questions and of course perusing my collection. So tune in for more short and informative board game reviews. Take care everybody. Bye bye.